So this was a picture and it was called the Blue Marble. And in 1972, it was the first and probably the last time that humans were ever able to get a, a picture of the entire globe inside a single frame. It was taken 1972 during Apollo Mission 12, which was actually the last time that people ever set foot on the moon. Nonetheless, we have made lots of progress since then, of course. Earth's cast vision is to democratize that view of Earth from space that up until now only a few astronauts and a couple large governments have ever had the opportunity to enjoy. And so what we're doing is we're building out a platform um, that, that takes all of our imagery, wraps it up, and looks, fr uh, frankly, to stream it out online. We started the company about five years ago in my basement here in Vancouver, and through a variety of circumstances and introductions and kind of knowing the right people at the right time, we were able to structure an agreement with the Russian Space Agency where we gave them two cameras. They did the launch on the International Space Station, the installation, the power, the downlink, that type of thing, and then we split the data. They take the imagery of Russia, and they give it to the ministries of forestry, farming, mapping, Coast Guard, which is what you do with pictures of Earth from space. And we took the imagery of the rest of the world. And we do two things with it. One is we sell it to people who want pictures of Earth from space, on one hand. And then on the other hand, we take it, we stream it, we process it, we try to get it out online for everybody else. Uh, we have uh, four cameras in space, uh, two on the International Space Station, as I mentioned, uh, two more cameras that we bought this last summer for about $100 million. This is a video here that we took of Vancouver, taken this summer. Space Station, it's the most expensive thing ever built. They've spent about $150 billion building it. It flies around the Earth, and so we have four cameras. One is what's called a low-resolution camera. It can see anything that's 20 meters big. So forests, fields, farms, agriculture is kind of the main use case of that. We have another camera that's called a medium resolution cam. It can see anything that's five meters big. Roads, rooftops, ships, planes. Uh, we have a high resolution still camera that can see anything that's 75 centimeters big. So cars, uh, buses, planes, things like that. And then we have a high resolution video camera that can track an area on the ground for about 75 seconds and, and can see movement. It can see which way the cars are going. And you saw that thing there. You saw uh, planes land in the Vancouver Harbor. Uh, going from the video of Vancouver to the other side of the world, this is a video of uh, Dubai. It was taken late this summer, and you see the building there on the right-hand side. That's the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. It looks like it's swaying. In fact, as the space station flies over Earth, we get a video from it above, or from, uh, from the front, from the top, and then from the back. So it's not a change in the building, obviously. It's a change in perspective. It's called the parallax effect. And what I want to do today was walk through some of the content that we have, and talk a little bit about how when you look at Earth from space, it changes you. Uh, I've talked to about 12 astronauts who have gone to space, and they all come back differently. They all get up there and they say, when, I, uh, when, they, when they look down at Earth and see how small it is, how fragile, how there's no borders or countries, they all come back fundamentally changed. It's an actual thing. They see that we're all living on the same planet. And when you talk to people who have gone up twice, they go up there once, they come back down, they go up a couple years later, they see how Earth has changed over that time. The rivers look different, the roads look different, forests look different, things like that, and they all come back with a greater sense of planet stewardship than they had when they went up. And so our core vision is to take a little bit of that perspective and see if we can find a way to give it to everybody else. This is some imagery from our medium resolution camera. Uh, this, is, this is kind of the view that you would see as you're flying over space. We call it the superhero uh, uh, view. And so as you're flying around uh, Earth, the space station goes around Earth about 16 times a day. It's traveling at about 25,000 kilometers an hour. This is the type of imagery you see. Mountains, forests, oceans. When you look at a lot of this, it becomes incredibly apparent. Not only is it beautiful, clearly, it's mesmerizing. The imagery that looks the best is typically the imagery that is the least developed. The other imagery that we have is uh, we signed an agreement with NASA uh, earlier this summer where they have a couple of cameras on the space station, really low resolution zoomed out, and they're pointed kind of out at the horizon, and they're called HDEV, High Definition Earth Viewing. And so we have access to this imagery. It's streaming over our website right now. Um, the space station goes around Earth every 90 minutes. Every, every 45 minutes, you see the sun rise or the sun set. There's people living up, up there, of course. They've been up there for about the last 15 years. And we take us all this stuff and we stream it out online. Uh, here's a video that actually uh, that we haven't released anywhere else. Uh, it's of uh, Fukushima. We just took it a few weeks ago. And when you see uh, imagery like this, you can add, a, add other context. You can add information on it. You can see cars. You can see that this site is now being uh, rehabilitated. 
You can see the water come in. You can add context to it. And on the other end of the spectrum, uh, here's a video, or here's a picture that we took uh, late this summer in uh, Beijing. And so you recall that China had organized, it was a, it was, uh, it was a celebration to end uh, World War II. And it was taken early September. Uh, this is in uh, Tiananmen Square on the left-hand side there. You can see it. And it just so happened that one of our satellites was going over just as the parade was about to start. And so if you look at the bottom there, kind of going left to right, there's the main road there. And so the government had closed all the factories. They wanted to clear the air. The cars weren't banned. You can see people. You can see troops about to goose step past the front of the parade. You can see armored vehicles. You can see tanks. You can see drones. You can see missile sites, uh, missile launchers on this image right here. So uh, we've been working with uh, nonprofits, uh, NGOs, uh, groups like the United Nations for about the last three years. And uh, earlier this fall, they called up and said that they had heard that ISIS had bombed uh, the Temple of Bel in Syria. And there was no, confirma that, and there was no uh, external confirmation, but there had been lots of reports on the ground. So they called up and said, will you guys be able to get a picture of it? We took a look at where the satellites were, the orbits, and so forth. And it turned out that we could get a picture the next day. So uh, this is what we took. And you can see the picture there on the left-hand side. This was the first uh, external picture that the UN used to verify that this 2,000-year-old temple had been destroyed on, uh, by ISIS. And on the right-hand side, you can, our picture was taken early September. There was a picture taken that was about a week earlier from another satellite. And if you look at the center part there, you can see that this temple that was frankly in rather pristine condition up until then, had been destroyed. So tragic and depressing, of course, on uh, lots of different levels, but being able to enable some type of acknowledgement, some type of change, um, was, was exciting, frankly, for us. Here's another use case. This is uh, Saudi Arabia. This is Mecca. If you, look at the, I mean, if you look at the center of the image there, you can see there's a little circle. Inside that circle, there's a black box. And that's where Muslims go for their uh, pilgrimage. And if you watch it, it's kind of hard to see you again. But if you watch it, you can actually see people walk around that center box there. A couple weeks later, we got a picture from one of our other satellites. It's a still picture. And if we zoom in a little bit, or on the 2 o'clock position of that little center dot in the middle, you can see a line that goes out like this. And that's where the crane that fell, uh, that fell over. A couple weeks after we took the original picture, we were able to capture this image, killed about 110 people, injured a few hundred more. And the point is, is that Earth changes. Things look different. Things happen over time. And if you have imagery like this, you can take it all, and you can frankly end up with a history of this event that's stored online forever. It can be incredibly evocative. So one of our groups down in California, data scientists, they have mapped every factory in China. And they draw a little circle around the factory and they count the cars. And the more cars in the factory, it means something. They'll take pictures of the trains leaving the factory. And the longer the train is, again, it means, some, I mean, it means something. They'll take pictures of the rivers behind the factory. One of our cameras can determine uh, levels of pollution in the river. They overlay social layer on top of that. If people are tweeting out at 4 a.m. from the middle of the factory, they're probably working 24-7, longer shifts. They mash all that data together, and they use it to predict the GDP of China, and it's incredibly accurate. You can take pictures of buildings from the sides. You can determine how high the buildings are. They take pictures of the coffee farms in South America. If the coffee farms are doing well in the spring, the price of coffee is going to go down. If the coffee farms aren't doing well, the price of coffee is probably going to go up. They'll take, um, they'll take pictures of oil pipelines, and you can track change around a pipeline. And if it used to be green and now it's black, it means something clearly. We started the company five years ago. Uh, space is popular again. Fifteen years ago, no one cared about space. Now you have people who want to go back to the moon. They want to go to Mars. I think 300,000 people have signed, to go, uh, signed up to go to Mars. And frankly, they're not going to come back. They're going to burn the ships. Some people view space to get up there and go further, go beyond. We view it a little differently. Our perspective at Earthcast is to get up there and actually look back. Take that perspective that people have when they get up to space, look back at Earth, and somehow make an impact here for the rest of us. Thank you.